The following opinions are solely those of Botest.com and its test captain. Hi, I'm Steve for Botest.com, and today we're going to be conducting an inspection and sea trial of a hardtop express cruiser from Galleon, the 405 HTS. We board the 405 from the swim platform that comes out six feet. It's covered in natural teak. In the center is a reboarding ladder with teak treads. Grab handles out of the sides, easing the transition out of the water. With the touch of a button, the electrically actuated tender garage opens to reveal open space, ready to be populated with a rib or PWC. We can make our way forward along the side decks from the port or starboard, but the cockpit is only accessible from the starboard side. As we make our way forward, we measure 21 inches between the rail and cabin side, and the rails come up 15 inches. I appreciated the thoughtful touch of the grab rail along the top of the cabin, and here's a nice feature, an opening gate at midships, all repeated to the other side. Fully forward, there are two bow pads, and notice how they don't interfere with allowing light into the forward cabin. Fully forward, rail height increases to 26 inches. The ground tackle is under a textured hatch. A turn and lock latch releases the hatch. Underneath is a windlass with chain road. A cleat is alongside, and there's road access to starboard. Ahead is a stainless steel roller supporting a galvanized plow anchor. Foot control switches are to starboard. A remote control spotlight is to port. As we move to the cockpit deck, the entry, as we said, is to starboard. An acrylic hatch maintains safety. Seating to port wraps around an expandable fiberglass table on a pair of high-low pedestals, allowing for conversion to a sun pad. The seating provides excellent views while underway, while remaining in close proximity to the host at the helm. Beverage holders are conveniently located to the aft corners of the seat back. Just ahead is a lounge with a fixed back that we'd really like to see made adjustable. A small step eases the entry to the lounge. To starboard is a refreshment center. It includes a covered sink and there's a holder for the cover. Just behind is an electric grill and open counter prep space. Storage and a refrigerator are below. We transition to the lower deck by way of a center-mounted companionway with a sliding hatch that retracts into the helm console. Once below, there's 6 feet 3 inches of overhead clearance. There's a salon to port with an L-shaped sofa wrapping around a solid wood walnut pedestal table. It features outstanding holly inlay work in the center and around the perimeter. A flip-up leaf expands the table's use. Storage above the hull side windows opens garage door style to allow for more interior access. The entertainment center components are at the forward end, right alongside the 32-inch TV. The fit and finish that Galleon is so well known for is evident here with the satin-finished walnut veneer with holly inlay. Alcantara suede is above. To starboard is the galley. Cabinets above house the microwave and ample storage. Below are hull side windows that include an opening port light for cross ventilation. The sink is covered and there's dedicated storage for the cover right behind the faucet. A double burner stove is alongside a counter prep area. Below is more storage, including a cabinet that takes good advantage of what would otherwise be dead space. As for the accommodations, the guest stateroom is located aft. This full beam stateroom includes a hanging locker at the entry and alongside is a seat just below an opening port light. The berth is mounted athwart shifts and divides if necessary to become two twin berths two feet six inches wide. Just aft is a wet head that includes a hull side window and powered ventilation. A full length mirror is just inside the door. Fully forward, the master stateroom has natural light coming in through the hull side windows with storage beneath. We measured 5 feet 10 inches of overhead clearance with 35 inches over the foot of the berth. Additional storage is underneath the berth. We can see more of the superb fit and finish. An opening port light is to both sides. The berth is center mounted with access to port and a convenient seat to starboard. Overhead is a skylight allowing even more natural light into the compartment. It's trimmed beautifully in solid wood. Strings allow the shade to slide into place and block the light for sleeping. The overhead is Alcantara suede with walnut trim. A 24-inch TV is to the aft bulkhead. Returning to storage, there's the usual accommodations for a hanging locker, and here's a clever use of space. A door reveals a lighted mirror, pull-out vanity shelf, and storage shelves inside the door, all in a cabinet about two inches deep. A door to the starboard side of the entry leads to the ensuite head. Inside is a mirrored cabinet over an opening port light. The sink is recessed into the solid surface counter and more storage cabinets are below. The walk-in shower is corner mounted and an opaque skylight provides light and privacy. And a separate entrance allows this head to serve double duty as a day head. Moving to operations, we'll start with the helm. 
In the center is a 12-inch display providing selectable information. To both sides are the tacks, air conditioning vents, and fuel gauges. Below and left are the two Volvo Penta engine displays and the stereo. To the center we have the two outdrive trim gauges flanking the steering indicator. To the right are the trim tab controls and autopilot. Rocker switches are grouped well with navigation, horn, and anchor controls to the left. To the right are accessories such as sunroof hatch, etc. An extended panel to the starboard side houses the dual engine controls and the stern drive joystick. Way down below is the VHF. The wrapped steering wheel is mounted to a tilt base and thank you for not forgetting the beverage holders. The compass is mounted rather far behind the panel. Down below there's a convenient footrest that also converts to an elevated platform 9 inches high for us vertically challenged operators and it also makes it more comfortable when in the seated position. And the helm seat is double wide, includes multiple tones and curved sided seat backs. Convenient chart book storage is to the port side with additional storage under that. Visibility was outstanding through the huge single piece windshield as well as the large side windows. The mullions were a tad wide, so I found myself leaning forward and back to ensure a clear sightline around them, and yes, the windshield wipers were quite effective in clearing a large swath to maintain that excellent visibility. I especially appreciated the opening sunroof along with the manually opening side window that allowed fresh air to circulate through the deck, plus this side window gave an improved view of the side of the boat. The nav lights and antennas are supported by a mast that is hinged to reduce the bridge clearance. The main electrical panel is located in the guest stateroom. The two 30 amp shore power connections are at the starboard side of the swim platform in a bit of a trip zone. And finally, the engine room is accessed through a hatch just inside the cockpit deck or through an even more convenient hatch inside the tender garage. Inside the generator is right at the bottom of the ladder and in a protective sound shield. The focal points of course being the twin 370 horsepower Volvo Penta D6 diesels turning DP out drives. The fuel tank is located just ahead of the stairs. As for the numbers, the Galleon 405 HTS has a length overall of 44 feet 2 inches, a beam of 12 feet 10 inches, and a draft of 2 feet 7 inches. With an empty weight of 21,253 pounds, 66% fuel, and 3 people on board, we had an estimated test weight of 22,852 pounds. With the twin 370 horsepower Volvo Penta D6 engines turning at 3620 RPM, we reached our top average speed of 40.8 miles per hour. Best cruise came in at 3000 RPM and 31.9 miles per hour. It was at that speed that the 26.6 gallon per hour fuel burn translated into 1.2 miles per gallon and a range of 271 miles, all while still holding back a 10% reserve of the boat's 251 gallon total fuel capacity. We came up on plane in 8 seconds with minimal bow rise that didn't affect our forward visibility. We then accelerated to 20 miles per hour in 9.2 seconds and continued on through 30 miles per hour in 16.5 seconds. She has gentle turning characteristics that showed no adverse qualities. She also has a sporty feel to her handling in that she responds so well to the helm. Test day was flat calm but crossing wakes showed no surprises and kept a dry ride with no hull slap. And when it came time for docking, the joystick system made short work of our precision maneuvering. Against the stiff crosswind, we were able to slip her stern first into position and then easily slide her over to the dock and still hold her just off of coming against the dock. The system was dialed in perfectly to the boat, all of which makes it much easier for someone trading up from a smaller boat. So in my opinion, we've got a good handling boat with kindly and predictable response, a comfortable layout that provides for relaxing and overnighting plus the fit and finish we've come to expect from the brand, all with an express cruiser layout with a hard top and full windshield, all rolled into the 405 HTS from Galleon. And that's my full walkthrough and performance evaluation. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.